Hello, and welcome to Identifying Common Pasture Plants. My name is Stephanie Smith, and I'm an equine science and management student at the University of Kentucky. One of my projects as an intern with the UK Forage Group was to put together this video to teach you guys how to easily identify common pasture plants. Kentucky bluegrass, orchard grass, and tall fescue are the most common grasses that producers see in their pastures. It is important to remember that the majority of fields are not monocultures, meaning that they are composed of many different species of plants, not just one type of grass. Pastures often include many species of weeds as well, but we will talk about them later. Kentucky pastures are commonly a mix of the grasses you see here, bluegrass, orchard grass, and tall fescue. Kentucky bluegrass is a perennial grass known for its narrow leaves and dark green color. One identifying characteristic to look for is the tip of the leaf. It is shaped like the keel of a boat. It also has a prominent midrib with lighter colored lines on either side. The bluegrass seed head is distinctive as it is pyramid shaped and has a purplish blue tint which gives the grass its name. Orchard grass is a perennial grass with soft, lax leaves and a prominent midvein. The ligule, like a scarf or shirt collar, circled here in red, is often easy to spot. The base of orchard grass stems are flat compared to tall fescue which are more round. You can feel the difference if you try to roll the stems between your fingers. The tips of orchard grass leaves are often torn or look shredded since they are so soft. The seed head is distinctive looking like tufts, which you can see here on the right. Tall fescue is also a perennial grass. It has wide, flat leaf blades with no prominent midway. Instead, the veins are equal in size and form ridges along the blade. The edges of tall fescue leaves are rough, actually serrated, and feel like a paper cut if the leaves slide against your fingers or legs. Tall fescue has auricles, circled here in red, that wrap around the leaf base. The auricles look kind of like crab claws. You can see that the stems are rolled, unlike the flat orchard grass stems. Tall fescue leaves are glossy on the underside, which can help you distinguish tall fescue from bluegrass or orchard grass because those are not shiny. Tall fescue seed heads are usually more linear in shape, except for when they open up to release pollen. Other than grasses, producers may also want legumes in their pastures. Red and white clover, shown here, are the most common. Alfalfa is also a legume, but is not commonly used for grazing. White clover is easy to identify when it has blossoms, which you can see in this picture on the right. The leaves are small and rounded, usually three per stem, unless you're lucky and find one with four. The stems are smooth and hairless. White clover is low growing compared to red clover and most grasses. The best way to identify red clover is by its distinctive reddish pinkish purple blossoms and hairy stems and leaves. The leaves are usually larger than white clover leaves, but that may depend on their stage of growth. Red clover grows taller than white clover and does best under rotational grazing. That wraps up the most common grasses and legumes found in pastures. Now I'm going to help you learn to identify some of Kentucky's common pasture weeds. We're going to go through them in alphabetical order. First is buttercup. This is easy to identify when it has its yellow flowers, but by the time you see the flowers, it's too late to spray herbicides to get rid of it. You're going to want to pay close attention to the picture on the left, because this is what the young buttercup plant looks like. This is the stage you need to be able to identify if you're wanting to try to get this weed out of your pastures. Note that the leaves are pretty small at this stage, just larger than the average thumbnail. The weed pictured here is known as curly dock. It should not be confused with plantain, which we'll talk about later. As you can see from this picture, dock can get pretty large, often more than one foot in diameter. The leaves are long and curled. It looks similar to a long lettuce leaf, but I would not recommend adding curly dock to your salads. Our next weed is actually a grass called Johnson grass, but in our pastures, producers consider this a weed because it has invasive tendencies. 
When everything is growing well, Johnson grass is easy to spot because it gets much taller than the rest of the pasture grasses, which you can see from the picture on the left. With the seed heads, it can easily be three to six feet tall. The seed heads look like a giant version of bluegrass seed heads, but are generally much more reddish purple in color. Johnson grass leaves look like shiny corn leaves due to their coloring and the distinctive white midrib, which you can see here in the picture on the right. This weed is also a warm season grass called nimble willow. It looks similar to Bermuda grass, but grows more upright than laterally like Bermuda grass does. It is also very shallow rooted and can easily be pulled up from the ground by hand. Bermuda grass does not come up easily, so that's a, an easy way to tell the difference. When nimble will is small and young, the leaves really stick out horizontally at almost a 90 degree angle, as you can see from the picture on the right, so it almost looks like a scarecrow's arms. Nimble will will go brown after a frost, which results in brownish pasture patches throughout the pasture. Livestock will not eat nimble will, so it may be the only thing left in an overgrazed pasture you'll easily be able to see the ungrazed patches sticking out. Plantains are very common in livestock pastures. They have waxy, almost shiny leaves and come in many types. The most common types shown here are narrowleaf or landsleaf plantain, seen on the very far right, and then broadleaf plantain, seen in the middle. Plantain leaves rarely get longer than four inches, so they are smaller weeds. You can see this size and their ability to fill in bare soil quickly in the image with the horse here. The main way to tell the difference between narrowleaf and broadleaf plantain is by the shape of the leaves. Broadleaf plantain is usually rounder and larger, while a narrowleaf is skinnier and longer. Poison hemlock is very common in Kentucky. You've probably even seen it growing along the sides of roads. At small stages, the leaves are delicate looking and lacy. They look a lot like carrot tops or Queen Anne's lace. One way to help tell the difference between Queen Anne's lace and poison hemlock is to look at the stems. Hemlock stems usually have a purplish tint, which you can see from the middle picture and even a little bit in the picture on the right. I remember this distinction as purple is poison. When it gets tall enough, poison hemlock produces large white flowers and can grow three to six feet tall. Fortunately, animals generally do not eat this weed, but if they do, it is toxic. Our last common pasture weed is ragweed. It germinates in hot weather, especially during the summer, so you won't see it in your pastures year round. There are many varieties of ragweed. We often see common ragweed and giant ragweed in Kentucky. I think ragweed leaves look kind of like fern leaves, but ragweed will have flowers in mature stages while ferns do not have flowers. Ragweed can also look similar to poison hemlock, but the main difference is the flowers and lack of purple stems. Ragweed leaves are also less lacy and intricate. Now that we've talked about some of the most common plants that can be found in Kentucky pastures, let's review my top five and how to identify them. For Kentucky bluegrass, look for its narrow leaves, dark green color, and boat-shaped tip. Kentucky bluegrass is this picture in the top right corner. For orchard grass, look for the soft, lax leaves, prominent midvein, and flat stem bases. You can see how flat the base is in the bottom right picture compared to the tall fescue stem to the left. For tall fescue, look for ridged leaves, serrated edges, claw-like oracles, and round stem bases. My top two weeds are buttercup and poison hemlock. Both are toxic and have a steadily increasing presence in Kentucky. For poison hemlock, look for carrot-like leaves and purplish stems. Lastly, for buttercup, look for clumps of small leaves that have three rounded portions. Remember that at the stage that you want to spray, they're generally about the size of an average thumbnail. Thank you guys for joining me today and learning how to identify common pasture plants. 
I wanted to mention a couple of apps that are really helpful with plant identification. Picture this is the one we use for the UK Horse Pasture Evaluation Program, and it is super easy to use. It does cost $29.99 a year. iNaturalist is another app that we recommend for plant identification, and it is free to download. I also wanted to thank Dr. Ray Smith for his contributions to this video and for being a great mentor during my internship. I'd also like to thank Krista Lay for teaching me how to identify these plants through the UK Horse Pasture Evaluation Program. Another big thanks goes to Dr. Jimmy Henning for the amazing photos he allowed me to use for this presentation. All photo credits go to Dr. Henning unless otherwise noted. Thank you.